Okay, let's start. Uh, I hope you had a good long weekend break and are ready to resume college education at Georgia Tech. We're continuing with our study of graph theory, and our first concept for today is the notion of an induced subgraph. So given a graph, G, another graph is an induced subgraph when it's, as first of all, it is a subgraph, but most importantly, every possible edge that could be present is present. So I show on the left a graph with vertex set 1 through 8, and on the right I show a subgraph, and if you'll notice, the vertices 6 and 7 are omitted. But look at the remaining vertices. Every possible edge that could be present in this subgraph is present. For example, there is no edge between 1 and 4 on the right because there is no edge between 1 and 4 on the left. So you couldn't possibly have that edge. But if you delete on the right the edge from 1 to 5, then it's no longer an induced subgraph. Is the notion of an induced subgraph clear? We are still there. No, they're gone. You can only have edges when both endpoints are present in the subgraph. Okay. So when you're specifying an induced subgraph, all you really have to do, given the parent graph, is say what the vertices are. So, for example, when I specify that G is this graph on the left, then I can completely be precise in my meaning of the subgraph on the right just by specifying the vertex set. So I can say, take the graph G and remove vertices 6 and 7. Now, when you remove vertices 6 and 7, you remove all edges incident with either of those two vertices. And when people write that G minus 6, 7, uh, if it's just one vertex, they'll, they'll often just say G minus 6 and leave off the squiggles. Again, the basic philosophy being mathematicians can be selectively lazy. Okay, our next concept is the notion of a cut vertex. A vertex X in a graph G is called a cut vertex if the induced subgraph that you get when you remove X from G has more components than the original graph. All right, now look at this graph with vertex set 1 through 12, uh, 1 through 13. How many components does it have? I hope, I hope you see two. Yes, two components. It's not connected. It has two components. But look what happens if you remove the vertex 4. If you remove the vertex 4, what's left has three components. So the components, the number of components now is two, but when you remove the vertex 4, it goes up to three. Uh, and by the way, when you remove vertex 4, what would you call 3 and 13 in what's left? They're one-point components. One-point components are also called loose points or isolated points. All right, now look at the vertex 7. If you remove 7 then, again, you have more components left. In this case, when you remove 7, again, you have three components. Removing one vertex can dramatically increase the number of components. Here, it's just gone up by one, but it can go up quite a bit. There's no bound on the amount of the increase. 
But any time you have a vertex whose removal increases the number of components, then you call it a cut vertex.